that which you fixate your view on becomes your food. Um, and that's the thing, that which we have feasted on in the past, hopefully there was some good within it. Now, I used to be very much into uh, Frank Herbert's Dune. And I'll just say this, this is probably, if anything, a reflection of how I view myself. Um, not to my glory, but just, it's, it's actually to my shame. Um, but it is how I function in life. More than simply calculators, mentats possess exceptional cognitive abilities of memory and perception that are the foundations for supra-logical hypothesizing. Mentats are able to sift large volumes of data and devise concise analysis in a process that goes far beyond logical deduction. You can read the rest of this here. Um, I don't take the Sappho juice now. Um, I don't anymore because it is very addictive. But it is unfortunately the way that my brain works. Now this, I actually took some notes here. Um, what is life like as a mentat? Uh, in my mind, something comes in and I obsess over it, and I overthink it, and it, I suddenly am, I need to find ways to arm myself, guard myself, and the only way that you do that is when you lose yourself, when you fixate your eye on Jesus Christ. So uh, if you take the idea of the Mentat from Frank Herbert's Dune, it works if you uh, flip it, reverse it about 180 degrees, throw a bow on top, and return it back to Jesus, because that's the only way in which our lives here as we breathe underwater this is how we can this is how we survive our lives with the anointing of his holy spirit um, when the little i am dwells within the big i am everything has its place and he eats with us he comes and he dines with us so that which is my weakness becomes my strength in a fashion, it's like embracing who you are, and you grow past your sins. You grow past the soil from which you are planted. Um, so I'm very concerned with the bread of life, and I'm also concerned with the math of life. I uh, fixate upon little tidbits of information, like that which the that which which <laughs> um, what you do well makes you a witch. If you do something very well, you become a mage. If you have understanding and knowledge, you can be a mage. In other words, you can influence other people to do either your will or the will of God. You choose which direction you face, whether heavenly bound or earthly bound. I don't always face the right direction. However, I do know the direction of the right direction. <laughs> because I have had experiences in which I was drawn up from the well. I'm not going to get into that. But where we live now, we are, we are breathing underwater. Circumstances of life make it so much that we stop breathing. And just like uh, body parts or cells within a muscle, if you, there's not enough oxygen flowing to that cell, there's a buildup of lactic acid, acidity, anger, resentment, uh, aggression, these things as a result of us living in the body of Christ. So I believe that our lives can be understood uh, the situations that we that that face us in life, if we have a better understanding of how to view them, then we can walk in the middle. We won't react out of judgment. And we won't react. We'll more. We'll be more likely to react with mercy, but also with the discernment that comes with judgment, so that your little I am will be walking straight ahead. Go before me. Turn neither left nor right. We want to walk that middle path. Yeshua walked on the water. So hey. What's that about, you know? Um, but we are to be as wise as serpents and as gentle as doves. And this means that we know how to wield the knife, yet we wield it with love. We feather one another. We warm one another so that we don't have to lash out. And we feed one another of ourselves. This whole video is provoked. This, this right here, be aware of wolves in sheep's clothing. We need to gird up the loins of our minds. Um, a life... Live, walking with Jesus Christ is more than you simply laying down to every emotional thing that comes your way. We are meant, we are called to stand on the rock. And that means that we are not simply gaseous forms. Yes, we, we can occupy a gaseous state. We can also pie, occupy a liquid state, giving, giving to one another. 
But what we really want to aim for is that our grounding be in that solid state of spiritual being. And he who is the rock outside of time. When we form ourselves there and we drop anchor there, this world becomes a piece of cake. Of course, <laughs> as soon as it becomes a piece of cake is when another problem enters into the equation. So I'm all about um, resolving things as much as possible. And I go through ups and downs and that's all right. I mean, I, I love the Mentat idea. He says, you know, it is by will alone that I set my mind in motion. Well, that's true for sometimes I can do that, but I choose to say instead it is by his will alone that I have breath, for he has numbered my days in the length and breadth of all living. It is by his grace and mercy alone that we have salvation and can walk in it. And when we walk in it is when we're outside of the box. When we doubt is when we fall into the hole of the box. And we can dwell there and linger there. The choice is always a question of whether we're living life to function according to his will or our will. We are either eating or we are giving of ourselves to be eaten. This is probably very heavy for some. I'll just say this though. This is this was a beautiful passage I just trained to right here. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And the Holy One of Israel is your redeemer. Okay. Um, I'll just skip ahead here. Right? This is this is what I want to... This, this part right here is what I want to focus on. Like a wife deserted and grieved in spirit. Like a wife of youth when she is cast off, says your God. For a brief moment I deserted you. But with great compassion, I will gather you. In overflowing anger for a moment, I hid my face from you. But with everlasting love, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is like the days of Noah to me. As I swore that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so I have sworn that I will not be angry with you and will not rebuke you. For the mountains may part and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you. And my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. O oh, afflicted one, storm-tossed and not comforted, behold, I will set your stones in antimony and lay your foundations with sapphires. I will make your pinnacles of agate, your gates of carbuncles, and your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. <laughs> 